Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week 13 of my 2023 reads. This week I read some nonfiction, including one that I absolutely loved, uh, some poetry, and then I did DNF a romance novel that I had been looking forward to. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I read Dislocations by Sylvia Malloy, translated from Spanish by Jennifer Croft. This is a really short auto fiction that is basically reflections of the author upon her very, very close friend developing Alzheimer's and losing not just her memories, but also kind of her language and her ability to um, communicate. It is a bunch of different sort of very small little reflections, little mini chapters or essays that kind of explore how her friend's identity is the same or is changed by some of these losses. So even when she doesn't have the memories, maybe she still has the same types of reactions at first, but then as the disease progresses, how that changes and kind of how her friend's identity and how she relates to her changes. And then also how the loss of those memories and the loss of that connection affects the author's own identity because so much of who she is is in a sense built up through that relationship, through that deep and long friendship. Um, and her friend is the only one who understood certain parts of her. So if her friend is no longer there to understand and remember those parts, what happens to those and it, it's just reflections on kind of grief and loss and memory and language and it was like really really interesting i think that um i could have dealt with it being maybe just a little bit uh, more in depth or kind of somehow exploring things a little bit more from her friend's perspective um but even so i just thought it was really interesting and it's such a short read so i definitely enjoyed this and i gave it four out of five stars Next, I read The White Mosque by Sophia Samatar. Samatar is the author of a fantasy series. Um, it begins with A Stranger in a Laundria, which I've heard of, but I haven't read. But a while back when I was putting together some anticipated releases, I recognized her name and saw this book and thought, that sounds interesting. So I put it on my list and I finally got to it and this was so good. I loved this book. It's a very unique type of story. Um, so it may not work for everybody, but it was just everything that I enjoy. So this is her memoir as she is taking a journey to Uzbekistan with a bunch of other um, kind of Mennonite people who are looking at a group of Mennonites who in the late 1800s sort of went to Uzbekistan because they believed that was where um, things would happen with the second coming of Christ and sort of the end of the world. Um, and so it's her reflections as she's going on this journey, as well as her reflections on her own sort of identity and history as well as lots of deep dives into the history and culture of the Mennonites. She is Mennonite herself and the sort of history and culture of Uzbekistan um, and just kind of reflecting on all of these things together. Uh, she, she frequently refers to it as a magpie approach where she doesn't have a central thesis exactly. It's not just one storyline that is going through, but instead it's so many um, disconnected but at the same time interrelated ideas and historical events and people uh, and it's just so fascinating reading her writing and looking at the nuanced way that she's trying to understand a lot of issues um, especially because on her mother's side, her mother is a Swiss German Mennonite for you know many, many, many generations. Um, and her father is Somali and her mother had met him when she was, I think, teaching in Somalia. And so that means that Sophia Samatar um, isn't white and doesn't have quite the same experience in the Mennonite community as a lot of other people. Uh, and so she feels this sort of strangeness of the 
intersection of all of her identities uh, in this Mennonite community and also is relating a lot of that to the strangeness of these Mennonites going to Uzbekistan in the 1800s and kind of how all of that came together. And so it's just reflections on identity and reflections on history, reflections especially on um, Mennonites themselves, like what the sort of uh, goals of Mennonite communities are, their impacts on other places, their values, and just so many deep dives into really fascinating historical events and people and uh, impacts and lots of really interesting ideas. It is a little um, flowery language at times, so I think that if you start just reading a sample of this, you'll get an idea of if that writing style works for you. And you have to be okay with just going with the flow in this story. But I I loved this so, so, so much. That was absolutely fascinating. And I gave it five out of five stars. Then I read The Symmetry of Fish by Su Cho, which is a poetry collection all about sort of Korean identity and the immigrant experience and family and tradition um, and also, you know, dealing with being in the U.S. and some of the racism and microaggressions that happen. I think the themes of this poetry collection are exactly the sort of themes that I really enjoy in poetry, um, but this poetry collection also has a little bit of body horror, especially related to like uh, killing and eating fish, just way too much graphicness for me in, in some of the poems. Um, it also, I think, maybe didn't have the kind of wording that speaks to me. Obviously, the sort of poetic voice of um, a collection is something that will be very personal as to whether or not it speaks to you. This one didn't quite speak to me, but I still really thought the themes in this and the ideas that were explored were, were really fascinating. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. And then lastly, I did DNF a book, which was Season of Love by Helena Greer. This is a holiday romance novel that I'd actually put on in anticipated releases because it sounded super cute. It's about um, a Jewish woman who ends up inheriting this Christmas tree uh, farm and experience place that her aunt ran um, and she ends up falling in love with the sort of manager there and it like sounded so cute. But, and I knew this might be the case because Kazan and Always Doing had warned me that she'd heard it has like a, a lot of heavier content in this. This ended up being a really um, kind of high angst, emotional, heavy book. So I got through 12% of it before I realized this is probably just not going to be my cup of tea. Um, the A lot of the characters in this are dealing with major issues grief, recovering from alcoholism, uh, toxic relationships, abuse, all kinds of things. So all of the characters are, are dealing with a lot and there's a lot of conflict and emotional just turmoil that is happening even in just this first 12%. And I found that really overwhelming. I, I like a lot more like a rom-com or very gentle novels and so this one was just too intense for me um, but I do think that it has a lot of interesting ideas that it's exploring and the premise still is like this really cute holiday romance um, so if you're somebody who enjoys like the higher emotional level this could work for you even though it was a DNF for me Okay, so that is everything that I read in DNF'd this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, you wanna chat about them, or if you've read anything good this week, or if you've read any really great memoirs, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.